Hello and welcome to GV Face. My name is Solana and on the line with us now is Portnoy, um, who is the founder and co-editor of GV in Chinese. Um, he's based in Taipei. Um, Portnoy, we, we might be joined a little bit later by um, Ifan Lin, who's a Taiwan contributor for Global Voices. We'll see if, if she manages to log on. But in the meantime, um, Portnoy, let's talk about these protests um, that have been dubbed the sunflower protests. Um, yeah. For three weeks in March, protesters occupied um, the main legislative um, headquarters in, in Taiwan, and they were protesting against a trade agreement between China and Taiwan, um, and are basically in favor of continued autonomy for Taiwan um, and um, for people who are watching, I guess, you know, it, I've been to Taiwan one time and it kind of depends who you ask, um, what they reply when you ask if Taiwan and China are one country or two countries. So what is, you know, what is the situation between Taiwan and China? Okay, basically, I believe, of course, still a lot of people will confuse Taiwan and China, and actually, there are still a lot of people in Taiwan confuse Taiwan and China. But however, uh, in the most recent survey, most of the Taiwanese, more than 80% of Taiwanese, think ourselves as Taiwanese, not Chinese. And uh, because the history historical incidents. Taiwan and China was uh, was was once one uh, political entity, but right now we are two separate uh, political entity. And uh, of course, uh, Taiwan as the Republic of China was not recognized by the United States, uh, the, the United States, uh, the UN as the, as a country. But however, we still remain our sovereignty. And we still remain a very vibrant economy. And uh, however, because we 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 are very close to China, and China as a rising economy power, we have been doing business with, with China for for the past thirty years. And Taiwan's business at what is and still is the was and still is the one of the main contributor to Taiwan's economy growth. Mm -hmm. And however, because of this economy tie, and with the rising economy power of China, most of uh, a lot of Taiwan's uh, life aspects or economy aspects are somehow penetrated by China's political power. And uh, this uh, service trade agreement is one. Uh, if we if it passed and it was enacted, it will be one of the milestone or the key key point, uh, the moment that China can really somehow overtakes Taiwan's economy. So this yeah, is this is what China, people are afraid of. Because China, if if you ask official China, they will say that Taiwan is part of China. Um, sure. And it's funny because the the pressure um, there's there's depending on who is elected in Taiwan um, sometimes the government is more friendly to China or less friendly to China and right now on that scale you have a government that's democratically elected in Taiwan who is more friendly to China than the previous government was yes. um, and so the the pressure now for more trade and, and partnership with China is also from within Taiwan. I mean, despite of what the protesters are saying or or what the surveys say about Taiwanese identity, I mean, you can't deny that, that this government was democratically elected, which makes me wonder when there are, even when there are thousands of protesters um, occupying the, the government and protesting on the streets, are they themselves democratic, even though they're asking for democracy and continued autonomy? Yeah, this uh, is a very good question. Of course, we all know that uh, Taiwan has a democracy, and uh, we elected our government 
every every fourth every fourth year. However, uh, politicians will change. And uh, four years ago, or eight year, uh, actually six years ago, when the K K uh, Kuomintang was once re-elected as a ruling party, actually uh, we most of the voters actually believe their uh, strategy or believe, their, believe in their ability to re, uh, to enhance or uh, improve our economy situation. But however, the economy of Taiwan actually didn't improve and actually it, be, it gets worse and worse. And uh, what worries most Taiwanese is that this government always tend to search for ways to get closer to China. However, all these strategies uh, brought out by, by our government did not work. So before the service trade agreement, a lot of agreement or a lot of uh, you know closer connection were already made between Taiwan and China, but actually our economy is getting worse. So mm -hmm. people are beginning to realize that it is the reason that we are too close to China. So our economic growth is not, uh, we don't see, uh, so our economic growth is actually weaker and weaker. And uh, of course, the not people much on the street are not democratic elected. They are not uh, they don't represent everyone in, in Taiwan. However, we, I think it's really, uh, it's still, a, it's a very important way for Taiwanese citizens to convey and to let, let our voice be heard because in the current situation and uh, which is quite, in the current situation when our government was not able and uh, is not willing to respond to citizens' opinion, then occupation becomes an application. I think this is the background. And it's interesting because they've actually been reasonably successful. I mean, to the extent that the government has indicated that they're willing to listen to some of the demands and they've, they've changed or modified some of their positions on things. It's interesting when you compare it to um, you know, all the protests that we've seen in the past five years in many, many different countries. I mean, Ukraine or, or Venezuela, or some of these more, you know, famous cases. Um, the, the protests in Taiwan haven't been as violent. Um, the crackdowns haven't been as violent as some of the ones we've seen um, in other countries. Um, in fact, the, the protests still continue now, a, a month later, Outside, you know, they're not occupying anymore, but now they've, they've expanded their protests now and are talking about um, nuclear power um, and other kinds of issues. Um, can you say something about the, the kind of uh, environment of, of freedom of expression in, in Taipei in this, or Taiwan in this regard? Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I think that the the change after the the protest against or the occupation uh, against the service trade agreement uh, made by the government actually is very very little. The government did not really change their policy. They are just just trying to uh, postpone or redirect people's attention. So this is why now Taiwanese citizens who are not satisfied by the change made by our government are now searching for other breakthroughs in our uh, policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you meant, what you have just mentioned is that the nuclear power plant and our election system and uh, actually a lot, a lot of issues are brought up recently because people are still, you know, our the 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 willingness or the ambition or the 
the desire to change something of Taiwan was not satisfied. And the, so even though students or protesters retreat from the occupation and leave the legislature again, uh, the, the final goal was not achieved. So there are still a lot of people uh, and uh, a lot of people, a lot of citizens are still searching for another topic to tackle with. Mm -hmm. And uh, freedom of information is, of course, uh, a relatively small issue in Taiwan because Taiwanese people uh, for the past, okay, I, I would say for the past 12, uh, 20 years, we enjoy a very relatively liberal uh, freedom of expression in in all the Asia religion, or even even in the whole in the whole world, we enjoy the relatively big big uh, freedom information space. However, uh, the mainstream media is a uh, is an issue because our mainstream media is too uh, too much controlled by the business, and business is always pro government. Mm -hmm. So this is an issue because citizens can always can only find their voice, can only uh, convey their idea on the internet. So that this is why internet is is very very important during this whole uh, protest or occupation and until now. And uh, I remember I remember seeing yeah. a, a live webcam from inside the the occupied um, government. Um, can you say something more about some of the more creative uses of citizen media throughout the protests? Sure. You know, using uh, streaming during the protest actually starts back in 2008 when this uh, when Kuomintang, the KMT, was first uh, was once again reelected, and when the China's special uh, ambassador. Chen Yunlin visits Taiwan, and uh, there is another. There, there was a, also a huge protest during that time, and uh, people start to use screen, uh, streaming media to show what's happening without any misinterpretation by mainstream media or by anyone. So their idea of using streaming media is to show that this is reality. This is what. This is everything. You can check. You can examine what's happening. So at this time, actually there are more than 10 different cameras setting up in different areas inside the legislative end or outside on the roads, on different uh, corners of the occup occupation. There are more than 10 different cameras uh, streaming 24 hours during the whole occupation. and. Uh, this is only one of the occasion of the uh, the new media in this protest, because Taiwan has a lot of actually there is a very important group of engineers or and designers. They form uh, an official group called G Zero V, which uh, is similar to G O V government, mm -hmm. and they want their their goal is to rebuild the government via their technology. Uh, Ability. So this time they contribute a lot. They they create applications, mobile applications, and they they help uh, build websites in in just one day, including uh, the, a website that aggregate all the uh, information, including because during this protest, a lot of people donate uh, a lot of goods and money, students. So. There, there has to be a very, very good system to aggregate all this information. So they actually they build up all the system just in one or two days, mm. and they create apps, they create uh, infographic, and they also create uh, the English version of of the pro of the protest to show what's really happening in Taiwan to show to the world. And uh, this this is all done in a very limited time, and this is really something that excites the protester and the students or the 
people who, who are protesting against the government because not just against China. This is not an issue just between China and Taiwan. Actually, this is more an issue between generations. And uh, people, most of the protesters, they are young people. They are students. They are feel they they, they feel they are feeling that the their inability or their they are they are being ignored by the ruling power. So mm -hmm. and all by the big business and uh, young people cannot see the opportunity of climbing up in our society. So this protest is also important for young people when they start to show off what we can do. Actually, actually a lot of media, mainstream media, were shocked by their by their their ability to use new media to uh, talk to the world. Uh, Students use Reddit, use a lot of other online services to talk about and to show the information of the protest. Let me interrupt you for a moment because I see that Ethan managed to join us um, yes. before the end of the chat. Um, hi, thanks for coming. Um, I've talked to um, Portnoy and his cat uh, about yeah. <laughs> about the um, the background for the protests and the current situation and. I guess I'm, I might ask you, um, since we've covered some of the basics of, of what happened and, and why, can you say something that has surprised you about these protests? Um, was it unexpected or, or has it been um, something that you could have predicted? Oh no, we can't hear you. I'm afraid her microphone is turned off. I'm afraid your microphone is turned off. Um, see if, if you can see the image of the microphone and maybe switch it on and off um, in the top of your screen. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. Now, we, now it's off. Yeah, good. Um, can you hear Hello. Me? OK. Hello. Um. We can hear you. So I, what I asked was, um, what has surprised you about these protests? Oh no, I think I think the microphone is off again. Hi, Ivan. We cannot hear you. Can you turn the microphone back on? Oh. Too bad. Um, yeah, too bad. <laughs> um, well, partner, um, I found, did you find the microphone again? No. No voice. No voice. I'm sorry, <laughs> but thank you for trying. Um, partner, maybe you can answer the question then. Um, what has you mentioned some of this towards the end of what you were saying? What has surprised you in this think, uh, round of protests? I think I was surprised by the creativity of young people, because of course I, I, I if. Uh, I can still be considered as young people, uh, mm -hmm. even though I'm already be, uh, above 30. However, uh, for the past several years, Taiwanese young people, especially people between uh, 15 to 20 or 20, 22, uh, during this, between this age, they are actually very in a in a very deep depression. People do not tend to uh, recognize them as uh, ha having the ability to to change the society and to change uh, uh, to change uh, what what Taiwan is what Taiwan is uh, facing what the problem that Taiwan is facing and uh, since 
actually most of the problems that existed in Taiwan now are actually made by elder, older people. And, but older people always accuse young people as having poor ability or they, they are not having the uh, eyesight or insight or they are just, uh, you know, kids. Mm. But however, in this protest, these young people actually show their ability that they can, they, they actually, they know they can do a lot and they can, they actually, they really care about the future of Taiwan. And uh, I think they, it really surprised me that because before we, uh, a lot of elder people will uh, complain that our, our education system is damaged. So our students are, the, their quality are very bad. However, in this incident, or during the occupation, we see the students have the, the ability and the willingness to change the society. I think, and they have the leadership. They can have a voice. I think this is what surprised me the most. Well, thank you for sharing uh, this perspective. And thank you, Ivan, for, for logging on. And I'm sorry that we couldn't uh, hear your voice. But I should say that um, Ivan is the one who's been writing the majority of our Taiwan stories in the past weeks. And I hope she'll continue. And you can follow developments in Taiwan through our stories. And I hope you do. Um, thank you for watching GV Face. Thanks to you guys, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.